Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Mrs. Rusted Chiki and I want to thank you for dropping by and watching this video. This video has been requested by some of my friends in Singapore and in Macau. Shout out to Arnie and Kuya Nino in Macau. Um, this video is about migrating here in Australia and how me and my partner did it, how we applied for it, what's the process and um, what are the points that we need so that you're eligible to apply here. But before I begin, let me give you some background of um, our ethnicity or our origins. Um, me and my husband were originally from Philippines. I moved to Macau for three years for um, a job in um, Galaxy Macau. If you are familiar with it, it's a hotel. It's um, it's a five-star hotel in Macau. After three years, I got married and I moved to Singapore and I stayed there for four years. My husband was working there while I was in Macau. So basically, he stayed there for seven years. We did some ocular before moving here in Australia. So that was like three years ago with some of our friends from the church. And we want to see like how it goes or what's the feel of um, Sydney and Melbourne because we're trying to compare both of the states and for us we feel like it's more homey in Victoria that's why we moved here in Melbourne we love it here because we feel like people are warm and um, if you compare it to Singapore of course it's incomparable so there are some pros and cons pros in Singapore is very clean it's very safe it's very convenient everything is there you just go down to your building or go down from your condo and food and stalls are everywhere. You you want to go to the market, market is there, transportation is outside, train is everywhere. Since Singapore is a very small country, everywhere you go, there's a train station where you just can hop on and tap your card and that's it. Fare is very cheap as well. And if you'll compare the fare here in Australia, it'll cost you like $4.40 for a tram ride or a train ride, maximum of $8 something. Per day so what we loved here in Australia is actually the people people here are very warm number two the culture um, we feel like um, the vibe here and the culture here is um, richer if you'll compare it to Singapore number three we love the four seasons though it's very cold here in Melbourne like most of the time it feels like winter um, like currently it's almost autumn now but it still feels like winter Yesterday, we woke up with a 10 degree Celsius in the morning and then this morning, I think I woke up with a 16 degree Celsius weather, which I'll not complain because if you're like me, which is from Philippines, you know that in Philippines and in Singapore, it's very hot. So you always wait for colder weather and then now we're here, so I don't want to complain. Anyway, moving on, the reason why we chose to migrate here in Australia is because it's nearer to any other countries like Canada, New Zealand, um, United States. This is the nearest. Seven hour ride to Singapore, so basically it's like eight to nine hours ride to Philippines. So it's not that bad, so if there's any emergency, then we can always just go back to Philippines. We can always book for a ticket, just fly back. It's very convenient. So yes, I'm going to tackle about how we applied for our Australian PR. Basically, husband was the one who applied and I was just a dependent or I had a visa because I am his partner. But let me tackle to you the steps that we did. Firstly, let me tell you that we have applied for Visa 189. So Visa 189 is a permanent residency that you can get here in Australia. Visa 189 gives you the right to stay here in Australia wherever you wish to whether it is in the Western Australia, in Canberra, in Sydney, or in Victoria. So whichever your heart tells you, wherever you want to go, you can stay there because you have that 189 visa. So how did we get to apply for a 189 visa? You have to obtain such points so you can send or you can apply for an expression of interest. Expression of interest is going to be sent to Australian immigration I will be putting the link down below. Okay, so the points that you need to be able to apply here is up to 65 points. But during our time, as long as you can get 60 points, then you can get the eligibility to apply or send an expression of interest. Before I tell you on how to obtain the 60 or 65 points in applying for a 189 visa, 
let me tell you the other visa that you can get if you are lacking points on that. So on the other end, you can get the 190 visa, which is a state-sponsored visa. So basically, if you've received a 190 visa, then you can only stay in a specific state. So let's say you send a 190 visa and you have um, stated there that you wanted Victoria to sponsor you. It only means that you can stay there for a minimum of two years. And um, after that, then you are free to move to a different state. Some other people doesn't really stay in that state that they've chosen to. But I mean, they vouched for you because they feel like you're going to contribute to their economy to the state workforce so i believe that you have to honor that um, agreement that you have with the state what are the benefits that we do have here in australia for having visa 189 um to start with we have free medicare in philippines we call it phil health you just basically have to apply for a medicare card once you have the medicare card you are covered 100 percent whatever is medically necessary that you need to do like for example you come here pregnant and you have to give birth like after three months then it's already covered also if you give birth here your baby is going to be an australian citizen right away if you're pr please take a note of that and second is um if you have a child or if you have kids then they're also entitled to free education who doesn't want free education right um you just have to pay i think with a minimum of a thousand dollars per year mistaken or you also have to enroll them to different extracurricular activities since you are not paying anything for their academic part then you have to pay for the extracurricular activity such as karate volleyball or different sports that you want them to join to then you just have to pay that or top off but if you are not keen on doing that or if you're not keen on enrolling them to extracurricular activities i think it's still up to you not sure about that because I don't have a child yet. Anyway, I think a 189 visa you can stay here indefinitely and after four years you can apply for an Australian residency like citizenship. You can get an Australian passport and you don't need to get visa from a lot of countries anymore. Next being resident here, you can also apply for the first homeowner's grant which is um, 10 grand. So what is a first homeowner's grant? It is actually a grant that the government is giving to residents or um, citizens who want to buy their first home. The grant is 10K and it's going to be deposited right into your bank account once you have applied for it. We have a provident fund here. It's something like SSS in Philippines. In Singapore, it's like CPF. Okay, so how can you get 65 points or 60 points to apply for an expression of interest or EOI? Anyway, let me start with the requirements on what you need to be able to come in here and to be able to gain points. First is skill requirements. There is um, a skill occupational list that you can find in the immigration website. I will be putting down the link below as well if you are interested. So there is a list of skilled occupation that um, they are requiring here. Like let's say accountant, um, IT, mechanics, airplane mechanics, those kind of skills that they are demanding here. If your skill is under that SOL, as we call it, SOL means skilled occupational list, means that you are entitled or your job is in demand here in Australia. So since your job is in demand here in Australia, then you're eligible to apply for points for that specific skill. So the points will be basing on how many years are your experience in doing that specific skill. Number two, number one and number two goes hand in hand. So the second one is your degree should relate to that skill. So like, let's say if you are an IT and practicing IT, you should have graduated with a course of either ComSci or Infotech or whatever they call it in your country, as long as you can prove that it is related to the skill that you're applying with. So basically, if you have like eight years of experience, then you get points for that. Later on, I will be jutting down the points equivalent of how many points you can get for such experience. I will be also putting a link on that down below so that you will know the exact points that you have. Third, your age should be below 45 to be able to apply for a residency. So basically when me and my partner have sent an UI, 
we were at around um, 31 years old. So being 31 years old, you can get 30 points. When you're 33, I think it goes down to 25, if I'm not mistaken. Again, it's going to be in the photo that I'll be showing to you later on how many points will you get on different age bracket, different years of experience, course, whatever. So yeah, so if you are 30 years old, you're at peak of getting the highest points that you can get, just 30 points of applying here in Australia. Number four, you have to have an English exam, be with IELTS or with PTE or with TOEFL depending on your occupation. So like we were in Singapore and when we wanted to have the English examination test, my husband took IELTS. But then for IELTS, there are four different types of categories that you need to do. Listening, reading, speaking, and writing. So he didn't get the point that he needed for the writing. They do not take the average of your scores, but they will take the lowest points that you get from a specific category. For example, you receive points of eight points in reading, you receive eight points in um, listening and hearing, and yet for your writing, you get 6.5, then your score is 6.5, that easy. But then, since my husband is um, an IT, he took the PTE exam, which is more on computerized type of thing. Those four categories still exist. It's just that if you are going to have the examination of speaking, you'll be just speaking to the computer, incomparable to IELTS, which you have to speak to a live person. So that gave him the advantage of taking the PTE exam instead of IELTS. So we got the maximum points for that as well which in PTE, if you wanted highest points I can get, you have to at least score eight ding, 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 to all of the bands, like hearing, listening, yeah, writing, whatever. Number four, you should have at least more than 65 points to be eligible to apply for an expression of interest or EOI. But lately, the immigration of Australia have been reducing the number of counts that they are inviting per month. Before, during our time, it was around, if I'm right, around 2,500 and now it's down to just a thousand. Every time they invite people through their expression of interest. Um, it's gone down, I'm not sure why, but if you want to know like when can you expect an invitation, you can go to this website of an agency which is ISCA. I -S -C -A -H. I'll be putting down the link below as well so that um, you can check them out. And um, lately, people who has 90 points are the only ones who were invited. I'm not sure if it's going to change in the near future or in the next few months. But for now, those are the only people that they are inviting 90 points and above. Before at number five, you should have the health and character requirements that the government requires you. So for health, of course, you should be perfectly healthy. They are specific to having tuberculosis, if I'm not wrong, but they are specific on that. They'll just do physical x-rays, urine tests, eye tests. I'm not sure why they also need you to do an eye test, but there is an eye test for character. You need to get MBI certificate, police clearance to the past 10 years that you've been to. The last requirement is for you to, of course, have your finances ready. So basically, you have to pay around 4,000 something Australian dollars for a person or for the main applicant when you got approved. And then for an additional person, you get to pay a thousand something dollars. There is no show money, which is a good thing, but the bad side of it is the money that you're going to pay to the government will stay with them and you're not going to be able to refund it or you're not going to be able to use it as your startup fund here in Australia. So if you want to apply for a specific skill, it should be at par with Australian standards. So for you to do that, like for my husband who is an IT, he needs to go through ACS. You need to go to the assessing body of your skill. So for my husband who is an IT, he go to ACS. Um, I'll put it down the link below and you can see like where did he have his skills assessed. So basically you have to send them your TOR, your diploma, your CV that has all of your past job history. Anyway, I do not want this to be too long. I hope that I did not um, stretch it and I didn't miss anything. 
Well, if you have comments, questions, or anything that you want to know, anything you want to ask about this topic, please just comment down below. I want to cut it short. Again, do like, subscribe, and um, share this to your friends who you think that can benefit from this video. Thank you guys. Thank you again and see you on my next video next Sunday. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Cheers.